Hello all my friends out there in YouTube land or Facebookville or Twitter world or something I don't know. <laughs> it's your good buddy Phil-tastic Phil here. I hope that you're all well. Uh, as you can see, I'm not coming from my comic book room today. I decided just to break things up a little bit. I'm not doing another cooking show, at least not yet. Maybe soon. Let me know and we'll find out. Um, I, I'm really I am excited though today because today we're going to talk about... Th this is actually a video I've wanted to do since day one, really since even before day one, if that's even possible. Because today we're going to talk about my favorite, favorite, favorite modern day comic book artist. And if you don't know who it is, I promise you that you'll know by the end of this video for sure. Before we do that, I am going to do something a little bit different than what we've usually done. This came actually from a suggestion from a great subscriber and a great, great comic book ambassador, Anthony Desiato. If you don't know Anthony, I've talked him up before. He has a number of great podcasts, uh, Digging for Kryptonite, The Long AR Halloween, for, for just to name a couple. And uh, he's actually also made a couple documentary films about comic book shops. I highly urge you to take a look at My Comic Shop Country. I'll put a link in the descriptions here. And Anthony's not just a smart person, not just a great comic book fan, but he puts everything in just such a, such a great and presentable way that even if you're not a comic book fan, if... I don't know, let's say you're, you're like me and you've dragged your spouse into watching this video, you'll appreciate it. It's, it's really something special. But, uh, you know, Anthony had a great suggestion. Why don't you have uh, a um, book of the week or a book of the video or whatnot? And I said, yeah, that's not a bad idea. This particular book I'm going to show you is not an actual comic, but it is essential and it, it really is something that I ran into just a little under a year ago. And I've read about three times so far. This is Understanding Comics, The Invisible Art by Scott McCloud. Now, this has been in print for a while. As you can see, I bought a used copy. I didn't bang it up like this. But really, whether you're a comic book fan or whether you're somebody who's planning on making your own comics, whether writing, drawing, or everything, this is a great book to read. This is a very scholarly approach about comics. And as you can see, it's not not a textbook, so yeah, it's a scholarly approach, it's a smart approach, but it's done just as a graphic novel. So that's great, you don't have to worry about reading page and page and page and page, no. Uh, it's, it's like reading any comic, but very well done, makes a whole lot of sense, and it's very engaging. I highly recommend that you pick it up, or even take it out of your library if you haven't read it yet. All right, well that being said, let's go on and get everything started. Stick around. The image on your screen right now is a piece titled Guarnica by the famous Cubist painter Pablo Picasso. The gray, black, and white painting is a massive 11 and a half feet tall and 24 and a half feet wide. The piece depicts the brutal aerial bombing of the ancient Basque town in 1937 by Nazi and Italian forces during the Spanish Civil War. During the attack, over 1,600 innocent people were killed, most of which were women, children, and elderly people as the able-bodied men of the town were away fighting the war. Picasso completed the painting in a little over a month while living in German-occupied Paris. It has been said upon seeing a photograph of the painting, a Nazi officer asked Picasso, Did you do this? To which he replied, No, you did. It is regarded by many as the single most moving and powerful piece of anti-war artwork in all of history. I show you this image not as a history lesson, but as a reminder, art is more than just a series of pencil markings or brush strokes. It is a language that conveys a message anyone can understand regardless of their level of education or country of origin. Although the artist I am highlighting in this video does not have his artwork hanging in museums all around the world, I firmly believe he should. In fact, I consider this gentleman to be the Picasso of modern day comics. His work exudes vibrance emotion, style, and at times humor in such a way that elevates the entire book that it appears in. The artist I'm here to talk to you about today is none other than Mike Del Mundo. Del Mundo has worked primarily for Marvel Comics over the past decade. Uh, his work includes such titles as Thor, The Avengers, Superior Spider-Man Team Up, and Star Wars, as well as several one-shots and single issues. Mike Del Mundo is also known for his brilliant cover work, which has earned him multiple awards and accolades over the span of his career, 
But rather than simply just show you a gallery of his work, I've handpicked and highlighted three titles, uh, concluding with what I submit to you is the best example of a marriage between narrative and sequential art in the past decade or possibly more. Stick around, let's take a look at that. The year was 2012 and the X-Men books were rebooting once again. Avengers vs. X-Men had just ended, leaving Charles Xavier dead at the hands of his star pupil Cyclops. In the midst of this new direction, a brand new title called X-Men Legacy launched, starring David Holler, better known as Legion. My only exposure to Legion at this point was during the Legion Quest story, the event that spurred the Age of Apocalypse. I really had no affinity for this character. I had not read New Mutants at all yet. What really drew me into this cover, though, was the collage-like portrait of Legion, made up of several notable characters and, and some really notable X-Men covers as well. Uh, it was a little bit of Magneto, a little bit of Wolverine, Cable, and Cyclops that equaled up to Legion in this ridiculous haircut. Uh, I was glad I picked up the title, the coming-of-age story of a young man with limitless powers forced to live outside of his father's shadow for the first time turned out to be my favorite of the X titles at the time. Del Mundo's art graced each cover with the exception of the final issue. Each piece set the tone of the book in a thought-provoking manner. To date, these covers are the most poignant, artful, at times satirical, and some of the most well-done covers to be released in recent memory. The next title we're going to be reviewing for this video came in 2015, when time ran out for the Marvel Universe. After a series of incursions between alternate realities, the Marvel 616 universe, as we've come to have known it, collided with the ultimate Marvel universe created only 15 years prior. The result was a series of pocket universes where the characters we had come to know and love for the past 70 plus years were changed to reflect the alternate realities from which they came. One of these pocket dimensions was the aptly named Weird World, where the mighty warrior Akron traverses a beautifully strange environment comprised of lost pieces of other worlds. The floating island of Weird World is a diverse environment teeming with a bevy of unique and unusual creatures. Akron's journey from the vibrant jungles fraught with dangerous creatures to the magma-filled depths of the planet is nothing short of a visual feast of the imagination. Del Mendo's work pairs so well with the wild imagination of Jason Aaron. The two would work again on Thor, which we're not going to look at in this video, but I do encourage you to check out. Del Mundo's work here is very colorful, visceral, and at times it almost seems like it's alive, like it's going to just leap off the page. His intricate and expressive painterly style perfectly matches the tone uh, of the story, and it really it, it elevates it as needed. It's almost perfect. Uh, his brushstrokes also have a way of reflecting the underlying tension and mood of the scenes, like when Akron is drinking in this pub with his would-be assassin, to the next minute when you have these series of just fluid and crazy motions in this brutal fight scene. It's really, really great. Weird World was one of the few elements of Battle World that transitioned into the main Marvel Universe at the conclusion of Akron's story. This time, however, the story follows Becca, a high school senior who recently lost her mother. Together, Becca and her new friend Goletta, the Wizard Slayer, go up against Morgan Le Fay and her army of lava men. Becca's tale, written by Sam Humphreys, is more emotional than the prior chapter of Weird World. Del Mundo's artwork here is even more painterly and expressive than in the former chapter. His brushstrokes are more wild and successfully capture the wonderment and action of Becca's journey. He uses his skills to deliver an emotional gut punch whenever you see Becca reflecting on her mother's death. When read back to back, both volumes of Weird World are a perfect yin and yang, representing a complete and whole story of being lost, coming to terms with being lost, and finding oneself again. They are truly a treasure any comic book fan looking for something other than Avengers, or anything wear a cape for that matter, will appreciate. Hey everyone, just wanted to bump in just for a few minutes here. If you like this video so far, and I hope that you are enjoying it, especially if you've gotten to this part, please go ahead and give this a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. It really does help out the channel. And really, it helps so many people who have never seen this channel see it. Uh, in fact, if you do really want to help me grow and expand and you do like this content, you want to share it with others, go ahead and share it. Whether it's on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, wherever, go ahead and share the content. You have my permission. Finally, if you're not subscribed already, why aren't you? <laughs> go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That's the best way to stay up to date and 
that really kind of explore this channel as well. Well, I'm going to get back to it. The final story I chose to highlight for this video is, in my mind, the perfect marriage of sequential art, visual art, and written word. So much so, I believe one particular splash page successfully encompasses the apex of what a great comic book should be. It is, in my mind, the comic book equivalent to Michelangelo's Birth of Man. The comic I'm speaking of, of course, is 2014's Electra, with art, of course, by the great Mike Del Mundo, and story by W. Hayden Blackman. Elektra, to me, is a character that has not been fully appreciated by Marvel since her death at the hands of Bullseye way back in Daredevil number 181. Since then, Elektra really has been underutilized and either used as a mere plot device, like we saw in New Avengers 31, or as cheesecake, like in her 2001 solo series. I should note, you know, saying all this, I should note, I should say, I have not read the most recent run on Daredevil where Elektra has assumed the role of the man, or in this case, woman without fear, during Matt Murdock's absence. So I'm going to exclude that from my assessment of the character. The majority of this run is told from Elektra's perspective, not just as an assassin or even as some sort of supporting role like we've seen in the past, but as a fully formed character who is coming to terms with the losses of her past. Blackman and Del Mundo make this distinction very early on in the first issue, where we see this really beautifully done double page of Electra dancing in front of these mirrors with images of her past. And as the images continue to roll on, and as she continues to dance around, we see her gradually transition from the role of a dancer into her current role as an assassin. Del Mundo once again shows his ability to perfectly capture the mood of any situation, whether it's a quiet and contemplative moment like we see at the end of issue two. Uh, we have the villain here, Cape Crow, with this really creepy smile, and he's anxiously awaiting to face off with Electra. Uh, or earlier in that same issue, when we see this fast and furious fight between Electra and Lady Bullseye. Speaking of Bullseye, for the first time I'm aware of at least, since Electra's death, she finally confronts the psychotic villain towards the end of the series. But what's really notable is how Damundo really plays out the events leading up to this in Elektra's head. I mean, really, it's easy for anyone to say that Bullseye is one of Marvel's deadliest villains. But Damundo's art transports us to a place we've never been before. In these very pages, we see Bullseye in Elektra's mind, where he still lives as he did years ago, as something more than a psychotic assassin. Rather, he's this ruthless and hauntingly grotesque monster who killed her and who haunts her to this very day. The raw energy and fear exuding from these panels gives the reader more of an emotional investment in Electra than any artist has in the past. This makes their battle at the end of the series so much more grandiose and so much more satisfying. This, however, is not that perfect splash page I promised you at the beginning of this video. This perfect moment comes in issue number nine of the series. Bullseye had escaped S.H.I.E.L.D. custody with the help of the mystical ninja clan known as the Hand. You may remember them from Daredevil, and in fact, Elektra has been a part of and even led them at, uh, at different times in history here. Uh, to find where the Hand has taken Bullseye, Elektra employs the help of Jennifer Kale, a powerful witch usually associated with Man-Thing. In order to access the magic necessary to locate Bullseye, Elektra has to pay the price, sharing the most painful moment of her life. And it's not the moment when Bullseye took her own weapon and plunged it through her heart, no. It's when the love of her life, Matt Murdock, also known as Daredevil, left her life, and she did nothing to stop him. We have never seen Elektra as vulnerable as she is in this very moment of time. She shares with us the ultimate should-have-said, would-have-said, could-have-said conversation that you can tell she's replayed in her head so many times. And Domendo's artwork elevates this scene so much. We get this interplay of what happened on the rooftops of Hell's Kitchen that very day, mixed with her inner emotions that she's kept locked away and hidden from the world, all in a page comprised in the shape of a giant heart. This page has resonated with me for a number of reasons, but primarily it's because I'm used to seeing comic book heroes fly through the sky overcoming obstacles both physical and mental to save the day no matter what, even if it meant cheating or overcoming death, which many heroes have, and including Elektra, of course. For the first time, though, here we see a character who has dwelled on her worst moment, as we all have, but she can't get past it. 
and Del Mundo's way of doing this, showing these past scenes of what was going on in her head and physically what was going on at the scene, and she's even having this conversation between herself, like, no, no, say this, say that, say this. Uh, the way he does that makes us really empathize with Electra masterfully and puts us in her shoes. And in this very moment, it was no longer Electra Nachachos' biggest defeat. It was our own. I should also note that Del Mundo did all of the covers for this series, and all of them are striking masterpieces that stand on their own as incredible works of art. In fact, I encourage you to hunt them down uh, in the wild. The original copies, the original comics, I should say, not just digital copies like you pull on the Marvel Unlimited app, but the actual back issues that you'd find in your LCS. Del Mundo has continued to branch out in the past year or so, getting attention for his work on Marvel covers such as X-Men, New Mutants, Fantastic Four, and the upcoming Kang series, just to name a few. He's also done some work outside of Marvel, including We Only Find Them When They're Dead, and I can tell you that this is a ratio variant I'm having the hardest trouble uh, hunting down myself. And, uh, and also The Many Deaths of Layla Star, really beautiful, flashy cover. Del Mundo is also one of the artists recently named who will be helping Todd McFarlane expand the Spawn universe. Uh, no title has been named yet as far as whatever project he's working on, but I can't wait to see what kind of hellish environment he makes for Al Simmons. Uh, I personally would like to see if Del Mundo took on some more street-level heroes. When it was announced Al Ewing would be taking over The Amazing Spider-Man later this year, I was hoping Del Mundo would be the named artist, but no luck. Uh, and I haven't really seen Del Mundo work on any DC characters, but I'd love to see his take on Batman. I think it would be magnificent to see him blend elements of Bruce Wayne's past and, uh, and Batman's present situation, just like he did with this Electra series that we just spoke about. Mike Del Mundo is also one of the creators who have flocked to Substack recently. He'll be working with Jonathan Hickman on Three Worlds, Three Moons, along with fellow artist Mike Huddleston and writers Al Ewing, Teeny Howard, and Ram V. Details are sketchy at the moment, but I can tell you, as soon as I saw Domendo's name attached to this project, I subscribed. No questions asked. Uh, I'll put out a link to their Substack page in the description of this video, just if you want to check them out. And of course, subscribe if it's something that you're interested in. I'd be doing you a disservice if I didn't mention that Del Mundo regularly sells his artwork, originals, prints, and posters, regularly through his website, MikeDelMundo.com. And I'll put a link in the description, of course, too. I will tell you that if you're interested in picking up any of his work, I would highly recommend that you sign up for his newsletter because his artwork is spectacular and it tends to sell out very, very quickly. Thank you again for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and I appreciate you taking a look at this, of course. If you like what you saw today, please leave a comment. Tell me, do you like Mr. Del Mundo's work as much as I did? Do you find it a little bit troublesome or is there another artist that you prefer? Let me know in the comments section. Let's mix it up a little bit. Thanks again for watching. I hope that you're having a great rest of your day, your evening, your morning, or whatever time you're watching. Peace, love, and comics. Take care.